everybody, it's Ryan. Now today is the day that I decided I would show you all how to operate the John Deere 8235R. Now we're sitting in the 82 right now, and I got the disc hooked up to it. What we're doing is we're, dis we're disking down um, chiseled ground ahead of the planter. Now all this ground out here is going to be put into soybeans, and we go ahead with the <clears throat> disc ahead of the planter to kind of smooth out any of the ridges and all that and whatnot, just to smooth it off. It does really good job so um, we're gonna go ahead and start talking about the 82 so I'm gonna go ahead and assume that you guys already know how to operate a clutch and the brakes on a, any kind of tractor uh, if you don't know how to work the clutch I advise that you go ahead and watch my how to operate uh, John Deere 4020 video it's very based basic with a synchro transmission uh, it's just a basic starting tractor and I show you how, exactly how to work the clutch and everything so um, yeah, assuming you know how to work this, down by the feet, we've got our diff lock to lock the back wheels together, clutch, brakes, and then this is a new feature that we haven't had on any of our, uh, any of our other tractors. Well, what this does, it lowers down the entire steering column, and then from there, you can adjust where you want it with this knob here, then you can adjust precisely where you want it to drop at. Which is nice and handy because if you need to get out of the tractor in a hurry, you can just hit that button with your foot and lift it up. And then it's completely out of your way. So, we have the key and the ignition. Pretty basic. Everybody should know that. Now up here, by the steering wheel, we got the field lights, road lights, and parking lights. And then we got the front wiper. And this actually has wiper fluid in it. I'm not going to do it because it's kind of annoying once you get those marks going on the windshield and over here we have turn signals basic if you push in there's supposed to be a horn but we disconnected the horn it's right up the front of the hood we disconnected it because the one that was on there is junk uh, we tried using it it didn't work so I pulled it off there and we got a new one and I just haven't had the time to put it on yet but it's probably gonna be a summer project it's not gonna take too long to do but just need to find the time to do it. Then up here, we got... No, I'm not going to be real technical about all this because, honestly, like with the Green Star and stuff, I don't know a whole lot as far as the Green Star goes. What I like to watch is the performance monitor screen, and it just tells you your ground speed, your acres per hour, how many acres you've done, engine speed, gallons per hour, and the gallons per hour... I use the highest I've ever seen this thing go is 12 gallons an hour. Usually it runs between 9 and 11. Uh, voltage, gallons per acre, and the distance you've traveled in feet. So that's just the performance monitor. Maybe I'll go through the Green Star on another day. Um, again, it's I am not really that savvy with it. I know my way around it, and that's about it. It's even got a handy dandy little outside temperature gauge, which I think is very very fancy. So if you want to hop in and get the tractor to move, the first thing you're going to do is push down the clutch. That's completely optional. I do it because I like to shift into gear gradually and just shift it over to neutral. And if you want to go forward, shift it up to F. And then it's going to automatically put the tractor into the gear that it was last in, or a randomly selected gear, I'm not exactly sure. And then release the clutch and your tractor will start moving. Now, pushing the clutch, tractor will stop moving. And you can control how fast you go with the engine speed knob. This is actually really nice. I'm a huge fan of this. The only downside to this is that if you're working up here with your hand, moving the hydraulic shift levers, you can move your hand back and you can accidentally hit it sometimes, but it's really not that big a deal. Reverse works the same way as forward. Now, when you're shifting, um, forward and reverse are different. So if you want to shift up when you're up up here, you're going to have to move up to the plus, which is forward. Then reverse, you have to pull it back. And doing that will make you go faster in either direction. So Now I'm not going to use the clutch now. I'm just going to let the tractor do its own thing. Move it over to forward. Then it automatically starts moving. Same thing if I take it out. Pretty simple, right? So the only really other things that are worth mentioning up here are 
how to work the hydraulic levers. These are quite a bit different. Now, to move up, let's say the first SCV I, we have set to move the disc up and down. If I want to push it, if I want it to drop down, I have to push forward on it, and that'll make it drop down. And the thing that I think is cool with these is that you have these stoppers that you can move up, and that if you want to completely like keep yourself from using those hydraulic levers, you just got to move that up, and you can't even hit it when it's down here because they actually have little stoppers back inside to keep them from moving around. So that's very handy. Then the next thing is the three-point. It works just like these two over here. Actually, this has four SEVs. But if you look up here in the green star, there's the command, whatever the heck it is. Now, if you drop down the three-point, it'll tell you exactly where it's at in percentage-wise. And I just think that's really cool. So... Uh, next thing, all the luxury options. We got warning lights, and we have the rotor, rotary beacon. And then the lights themselves. To get the actual, to get this pad to work over here, you have to flip on the lights up on the console. We have our option for the radio, and then these are all just um, buttons to use the Green Star. So that's pretty well basic how to operate. Um, I showed you guys how to operate the automatic power shift in one of my previous videos. You gotta hit that gear button and up here while you're moving. See, it's in fourth. I just gotta hit the check mark button. Now it'll save that. So now what it's gonna do, as I shift up, it's gonna go to the maximum fourth, fourth gear. Now let's say I was in 16th, and this would pretty much divide this up into 16 portions. Um, it's not really that simple, but as you would shift up here, if you're in 16th, that's going to be going 16th gear, provided the tractor can pull it like that. So as you shift down, or as you slow the engine speed down, the tractor will automatically shift to the necessary gear to keep the torque the same. So, um, maybe I'll get into that in the future once I use it a little bit more. Got our PTO lever. All you have to do is push that down, push it ahead, and it starts. And those are pretty much the basics to this tractor. Um, it's really simple, but there's a lot of options inside the performance monitor and the Green Star that'll really trick you up if you're not careful so another cool feature I like you can set the temperature you want so a lot of luxury options it's got the training seat we bought a Travis bought a fridge for it that's handy dandy keeps your drinks and food cold or warm so we got all the bells and whistles for it it's a pretty nifty tractor now if you guys have any more questions I know I didn't explain everything in perfect detail on like how to operate it, but um, I'll do do the best I can in the comments. This tractor is equipped with a mechanical seat. Some of you have asked me if it had a uh, hydraulic seat. It does not. However, we were looking at putting one in because we really like the hydraulics, the hydraulic seats themselves. Um, so yeah, I think that's about it. So thanks for watching. Uh, I hope this kind of cleared some things up. With any questions you guys had about operating the tractor itself. Uh, maybe I'll do another one once I learn more about the Green Star. Um, like I said, this is only my like third day in this tractor. Um, third full day. So, thanks for watching. Be sure to check out my other videos. And I'll see you next time, guys. Several of you have asked me if this tractor has GPS. Now, this tractor is GPS ready. It has everything in the Green Star that it needs to work the GPS. I can go in into the menu and actually have the screen for the GPS come up with the track with the small tractor on it. The only thing is that it, this tractor does not have the receiver on top of the cab. So it does it doesn't have the GPS right now. We're looking at getting it someday in the future. Uh, probably not anytime relatively soon, but we'll see. 
you know, things happen as they do, so. Um, yeah, I think you can go out and get a Starfire receiver for one of these tractors for under a thousand bucks. I think a new one goes for around two grand. And their price really varies on how accurate you want them to be. Uh, because the government actually scrambles the GPS signals because they don't want people to have a completely accurate pinpoint location. But uh, with those Starfire receivers, what they do is that they have multiple antennas in them. And then they account for all the changing signals from the, GP, from the GPS satellites. And then from that, they can determine within a certain certain amount of range exactly where the tractor is at which is pretty cool if they can counteract that effect from the scrambling that the government does so i just thought that was pretty cool and like i said we're, we're looking at getting gps at least for this tractor in the future sometime just not relatively soon